Hello guys, welcome back to another tutorial. Hit the bell icon button so that you don't miss out any tutorial. Okay, in this video, we're going to build our K nearest neighbors regression model. And we're going to work with the cancer data. So just a quick recap, let me close the sample data we had. Um, we, we processed this uh, data set called cancer final. Uh, you recall we had the broader data set that had a number of variables. So we did some, some exploratory analysis and whittled it down to just three predictor variables that we want to work with right now. So we're trying to predict, we're trying to create a model for this target death rate, which is a, a per capita, per 100,000 people uh, death rate due to cancer uh, based on county level data in the United States. And, and uh, so small, ge relatively small geographic regions, their corresponding death rates and other variables. And so we whittled it down to the uh, median income for the county and we log transformed to that. So the log of the median income, uh, the incidence rate, which is like a diagnosis rate, uh, per capita diagnosis rate, and then the poverty percent, because we saw that the, the uh, poverty level in the county correlates pretty strongly with, with the uh, cancer death rate. So higher poverty rate equals higher death rate uh, due to cancer in general, unfortunately. And so we're working with these variables. So we had the cancer final, and then we split that into training and testing in, in one of our earlier videos when we created the multiple regression model. Um, so we'll just stick with that. We'll stick with, uh, we'll stick with the train and test uh, data sets. And so uh, I want to introduce you to a new package here. It's the CARET package, C-A-R-E-T. Uh, and so when you're doing, um, you know, when you're doing, doing most of your, your kind of, your well-known uh, data science modeling, and really, uh, honestly, some of your your not as well-known. Uh, Carrot is a very powerful package. Uh, it's a really nice package uh, that just has a, uh, a lot of nice features. I really prefer to use it uh, when I'm doing uh, some sort of machine learning uh, workflow where I'm where I'm doing some modeling. Once I get past the exploratory analysis step and I have a pretty good sense of the data set that I'm going to be modeling on. Um, it, it even has some functions to like split your, your training and test that, that you can get into. We won't do it here, but, but it has a, just a number of nice functions and particularly for your model creation and your model assessment that we'll do in this video and the next video. Uh, it just creates a, a really clean workflow that, that's very intuitive and, and very easy to work with. So um, I'm going to load the, the Carrot package here. So we have that. Um, one of the first things I want to do, and this is one of the things that makes Carrot so powerful, is I want to set options for our cross-validation. So we mentioned in the last video that that with K nearest neighbors and, and a lot of other modeling methods as well, it's it's typical, uh, kind of a standard best practice to use some sort of cross validation. And so exploring all of those, you know, all the types of cross validation is really outside the scope of what we are trying to accomplish here. Um, so we're just going to use um, K fold standard K fold cross validation. Uh, so I'm going to create an object called TR control. And that really stands for training control. This is actually uh, one of the parameters that gets passed to our modeling function here in a, in a couple of minutes. Um, it, there's an option called, or a, a, an argument called TR control. It's the training control. And it's, it's a mechanism that allows you to just control some of the settings directly on your modeling. And so we can use it for a lot of things. Um, you'll see Carrot has a train control package, excuse me, a train control uh, function. And so what I want to do is method equals CV and number equals 10. And what I'm setting here is the, the cross validation method. Um, and then, uh, so that's CV for cross validation and then number which equals 10, number equals 10. So if you see here, um, what, what we can do is, uh, let's just look at train control here. I think it lists some of the methods that are available to you. Yeah, so um, you can see it controls the computational nuances of the train function. And we'll use the train function here in a few minutes. Uh, computational nuances just means you're setting some of the details around how that train function is going to work. And so um, method is a resampling method. Uh, so you can do uh, bootstrap, um, you can do cross-validation, so you got a few bootstrapping methods, cross-validation, repeated cross-validation, uh, or none, right? You can just uh, you can just estimate a single model on your entire training set. Uh, that's fine, too. 
Um, and then you've got some other bagging techniques and adaptive uh, boosting and cross-validation techniques. So uh, probably the most commonly used would be boot if you're bootstrapping. Uh, for cross-validation, it's either standard CV or repeated CV. Um, some people like to use repeated CV, and that has, it, has its places. But again, we'll just do kind of standard, standard cross-validation here, tenfold cross-validation. And so we're just going to... I'm just going to set set that option. Now, uh, let's go ahead and create our model. And you're probably thinking, well, it's that easy. Yeah, yeah, it's that easy. We're just going to create a KNN regression model. Now, I'll walk you through a lot of the options here. Uh, we're going to use the train function, okay, the train function. Uh, so in caret, the train function is where you actually build your model. Um, so this is the function that's going to, similar to with multiple regression, we used the LM function to, to, to get a linear model or a regression model. Um, so that's your modeling function there. Here we're using the train function. And the nice thing about the train function is that it has a ton of options and a ton of modeling types. Um, we actually could have created a regression model, our multiple regression model, using the train function if we wanted to. Um, and I'll actually show you where you would set that here in just a minute. So what we want to do is, first of all, we have the formula. So we want our target death rate onto everything, right? So our model is target death rate is the dependent variable. Everything else in our data set is the, is the independent variable. And that's when the data is trained. Uh, the data is trained, right? Now we're going to look at setting the method. So we want to set the method to k nearest neighbors. We want to set TR control to our TR control object. So TR control is, a, is an argument. It's a parameter that goes into the train function. We just went ahead and, and used our object called TR control. So our training control, the only thing we're passing to it is the fact that we want to do uh, tenfold cross-validation. There are a lot of other options and settings that you can control there, um, but... Uh, for right now, we're only going to do we're only going to do TR control. I'm also going to set something called preprocess, and I'll explain this in more detail in just a minute. I'm going to call it center and scale. So this this is uh, all of the code that we need to create our k nearest neighbors uh, regression model. So let's just walk through this in a little bit more detail. Um, I want to open up the help for the, the for the train function itself. Um, let's see, this is going to be in the carrot package. Here we go. So I clicked on it earlier. All right, so we want to fit predictive models over different tuning parameters, right? So this is a very robust, um, large scale, uh, very powerful uh, predictive, predictive function. So it does, you'll see it does a number of classification and regression routine, um, fits each model, calculates resampling, calculates your performance measures and all kinds of stuff. So it's, it's an extremely powerful, uh, extremely powerful function that, that we can use. Uh, so one of the things I want to do here is look at the uh, methods that we can, we can do. So method we set to K, KNN, K nearest neighbors, right? So method, the argument method is a string specifying which model to use. So if we just run this little, this little piece of code here, this names get model info, we'll just go ahead and run that directly in the console. And what we'll get is the list of all of the different uh, modeling methods that we can use, all of the different uh, predictive modeling methods. So you can see there's about 238 of them. Right, and so the train function actually supports all of these different modeling techniques. So here is our uh, here's our KNN. That's the 85th one on the list, right? So here's our K nearest neighbors model. Um, there are another a, a number of different models. Here's GAM. If you want a general additive model, uh, you can do that. Uh, oh gosh, there's just so many. Here's a, here's a bagging model that you can use. I'm looking for some of the more familiar ones. Here's GLM, so that's similar to our uh, LM function. It's generalized linear model. So if you wanted to do uh, a regression model, you could use GLM. Or here's our LM function, or LM method that we used uh, in the last section doing multiple regression. Uh, that's the, the linear model. So we could just set method equal LM here, and we would get a regression model. Right, um, so all of that is is supported. We have logistic regression, which we'll talk about later on in this course. We have neural nets. Uh, so just all kinds of all kinds of uh, models. Any really any 
any model that you would get into uh, is probably going to be supported here. There are some that, that either aren't supported or the options you might be looking for won't get to, but, but you have to exhaust um, a lot of tools in your tool belt before you get something that's not supported in the train function. So that's one of the reasons I like it is it's kind of a go-to. Um, you, you can, you can uh, just do it for a lot of things. Um, you can use it for a lot of different modeling types. So it's very, very robust. Okay. So um, that's, that's uh, kind of the method that's involved. We talk about train control. Now, what is this pre-process, center and scale? Well, recall in the last video, we, we discussed that 4K nearest neighbors, the algorithm is based on distance because we're selecting the closest observations, the K closest observations. So because the, the algorithm is based on distance, we need uh, all of our features to be in the same scale. And when we look at our cancer final, we see that these are clearly not in the same scale. So perhaps poverty percent and log of income uh, are pretty close. You know, they're right around 10, 11, 12, something like that. Um, but even still, we have poverty percent that goes up into the 20s. So they're not exact, but they're closer. But then we have the incidence rate, which is way up in the several hundreds, you know, three, four, five hundred. So these are clearly not in the same scale. So in order to put them in the same scale, one option would be to pre-process that data ourselves. And so before we pass train into the, the train, excuse me, the train data set into the train function, uh, we could add, add a, uh, you know, a piping string where we process that data and create standardized versions using methods that we've done in our exploratory analysis section of this course. Um, but that can get a little bit cumbersome um, because, you know, you, maybe you accidentally include some observations you weren't supposed to or you get the formula wrong or something like that. It doesn't do exactly what, you know, you may, may make a mistake and not do exactly what you intended to do. Um, and, and so the other issue is just compactness and, and efficiency in your programming. So the pre-process argument to the train function actually allows you to set the parameters around how you want that data pre-processed um, inside the algorithm. So we don't have to create a separate data frame that has standardized features. We can just pass our raw free features in the train data set and the, the uh, algorithm itself will do what's called centering and scaling, which is just another way to say standardization. Um, whenever we talked about standardizing in earlier videos where we subtract the mean and divide by the standard deviation to get kind of those values between negative three and positive three, that's what this does. It, it centers it, so that's subtracting the mean, and then scales it by subtracting, the, uh, dividing by the standard deviation. And so you can see over here in the, in the documentation, the pre-process has a number of different uh, options for how you want that data pre-processed. So um, you could do a Box-Cox transformation if you're looking at like time series data. You can do a Yo-Johnson. Uh, we can do center scale. We could do a range uh, transformation. So that's, uh, that's the option you would use if you wanted to, to put everything in a zero to one scale, which we've seen before. Um, there are a few different impute methods. So it can actually do a k-nearest neighbors algorithm and process it, um, an imputation on your missing values. Uh, similar for, a, it can run a bagging model in impute or a median impute. It can run PCA analysis, spatial analysis, all right inside that train function. So uh, if you don't know what's going on, you should not use these parameters. Um, you should not just tell the train function, just pass it something and say, yeah, I want you to pre-process. You really should understand what's, what's going on. So, you know, PCA is outside the scope of this course. If you don't know what PCA is, don't use PCA in the, in the, uh, pre-process option for the train function. So make sure you understand what's actually happening to your data, but once you do, then it's a lot more compact and efficient to just pass that right, right here into the data set. All right, so let's go ahead and run this. That'll run very quickly. You can see it's already done, uh, and we have, uh, we have a model. So let's go ahead and get our model information. Okay, uh, so we'll just go ahead and print out the KNN regression mod. And uh, so here we see, we, we used uh, 2,438 samples. There were three predictors. We pre-processed, so centered and scaled uh, three variables. We ran, uh, you can see the resampling method. We ran tenfold cross-validation. Uh, and so here's the summary of the sample sizes on each of those folds. They were about uh, just under 2,200 observations each. Uh, and then the, the leftover was left out for validation. Here's the, your result of your tuning of the uh, tuning parameters. So we tried K as five, seven, and nine, uh, and then we got uh, the corresponding RMSE, R squared, and 
and uh, mean absolute error values. Mean absolute error uh, is just another error metric. And so the RMSE was used to select the optimal model using the smallest value. And so the final value used for the model was k equals k equals 9. And uh, so we can see that RMSE in the RMSE column, uh, when k was 5, we had an RMSE of about 22. Uh, K was 7, we had an RMSE of 21, almost 22, and then a little bit lower, 21.78 whenever, whenever K was 9. So K being 9 has the lowest, the lowest RMSE value, and so that would be the, the champion model, right? It selected the lowest RMSE. So let's go ahead and have a plot of this. Uh, K and N, it'll plot that... Uh, the values of, of K and the corresponding RMSE. And so you can just see that we've gone down as K went from five to seven to nine, right? Uh, and then one other really nice uh, feature is the vari variable importance function. And again, this is another reason why I like caret, uh, variable importance of K reg mod. It actually does some internal calculation for variable importance. Uh, and so what we see here is that uh, this is based on a, an, an R squared calculation, uh, but we see that our overall, uh, and 100 is the highest, so log median income was most important, followed by incidence rate. And then once we've had those two accounted for, poverty percent actually did not add a lot into, into our model. So um, income and, and rate of diagnosis really do everything for this data set, for our training data set, really do everything we could hope to do in terms of offering a prediction. And the way that's calculated, you see it's a, it's a low S R squared variable importance. Don't worry about low S here. Uh, that's outside of the scope of what we're talking about. Just know that it's sort of a regression technique. Uh, and then R squared variable importance, uh, just to give you a, a kind of a heuristic or intuitive sense of what's going on here, uh, the, when the model runs, it's running calculations to say how much um, our, our squared measures the variation in the response. So in this case, how much fluctuation or variation, variability there is in target death rate across the training samples. And so what, what the, the, the function is doing is calculating, all right, how much variation does each of these variables account for? And so it'll run a simple little regression technique, and, it, and it, in this case, it says, all right, well, log median income accounts for the most variation of this set of variables. And then incidence rate accounts for the next most amount of variation in target death rate. Uh, and then, again, once we've done those, uh, poverty percent doesn't, doesn't really account for much of anything. So, so that's kind of the idea behind variable importance. So actually what some people will do in a, in a, in a machine learning workflow is use... Um, use something like this, like a K nearest neighbors or a decision tree that we'll get into in the next section, not as a final predictive model, but as a variable selection model. Uh, and some software actually have built-in variable selection functionality. Uh, and, and really what's happening behind the scenes on that is it's running, the software is running like a K nearest neighbors or a decision tree and extracting this variable importance calculation uh, and saying, okay, based on our variable importance estimates, based on the amount of, of variation in response that the variables are able to explain, here are your most important variables. And so that can be a handy piece. Again, even if you're not using this as your final model, uh, as a way to, to kind of get a hint on which, which variables should be in your, in your, uh, in your final model. Uh, it can be handy for that. So uh, there's some, some, you know, just some standard output here on our K nearest neighbors uh, model. So that's it. Um, really an introduction to the caret function, or excuse me, the caret package, uh, training control, and the train function, which again is just a real powerful way to create some, some very quick uh, and efficient machine learning models. So we have our initial K nearest neighbors model. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe the channel. If you like the video, do give us a thumbs up and share it. Also check out amazing discounts and offers on our premium courses in the description below.